Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're gonna go all the way back to 1995 and play with RS View 32 and try to get it to communicate to our PLC 5 and Slick 500 over Data Highway Plus through our Control Logics Gateway right here. But before we do, I wanna say a quick thanks to all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And I also want to let you all know about the new shirts that we have available over at the automationblog.com forward slash shop. I'm trying to wear a different one for each video and um, so you get an idea of what's available, but you can see them all over there. We also have phone cases and we have uh, coffee cups and all kinds of good stuff over there. So that's another way you can uh, support the show. In any case, um, with that said, let's go over to the computer here. And here you can see we have... Windows XP, and I've installed RSV32. But first, let's take a look at RSLINX Classic. And here you can see I have Ethernet set up, like we've set up in our previous uh, episodes. And um, you can see here, I actually have two ways to get to my Data Highway Plus. I have the ANC uh, 100E, which is up there on the top, right, right up there. And uh, I'll put a link on the screen to our pre previous uh, videos and articles about that. But um, that will get us from Ethernet out to the Data Highway Plus. But in this case, since most of you probably have a Control Logics Gateway, I wanted to cover that. So we'll go through the EMBT here. And my DHRIL is right there. And channel A. You can see my PLC5 and 504. So one of the things we have to do, because we're using a Control Logics gateway here and not a KT card, KTXP, KTX card in the computer, is uh, we're going to have to use OPC between RSU32 and RS Links. Now, this won't work if you have the demo version of RSU32 because without an activation for RS Links Classic, um, the OPC doesn't work. So RS Links Classic Lite is really designed just for, you know, use with RS Logix or Studio 5000. So having said that, let's go ahead and set up our OPC. The easiest way is to right click here. I'll right click on the PLC5 and I will go to configure new DDE OPC topic. Okay. And I'm going to call this, I'm actually going to call it PLC5. And you can see the PLC5 is already selected. And you may see that this is very similar to RS Lynx Enterprise or Factory Talk Lynx now. And uh, this is really the kind where the GUI came from for RS Lynx Enterprise. Um, the one thing I like to do here, um, it's asked me if I want to apply. The one thing I'd like to do here, um, besides uh, just making that relation between the topic, which would now be called the shortcut in RS Lynx Enterprise, and the controller, is I like to up this data collection. I like to make this 100 milliseconds instead of 1,000 milliseconds. Excellent. Okay, so now that that's done, let me go ahead now and add the second shortcut we'll need. This one will be for a Slick 504. I'll just call it Slick 4. And let's go back here and select our 504. There it is. Okay, we'll change the data collection there to 100 milliseconds as well. Whoops. There we go. Apply. Yes. Good. Okay, so we have both of our topics. Excellent. Okay, so we'll hit done here and let's go over the RSV32. We'll create a new project here, file new. And I'm just gonna call this, let's see, put it in my documents. And we'll call this tab underscore RSV underscore DHP. Okay. All right. Now, let me go ahead and move this over here so it's more like factory talk view. Okay. Now, on this system, the first thing you'll see is channel. And we can't use channels with RS Lynx Classic unless we had a legacy driver and a legacy PLC. Well, we're using legacy PLCs, right? But we're not using a legacy driver. We're going through the, um, the Control Logics Gateway. Now, if I was going directly from my computer to DF1 out of serial port, or if I was going through a PKTX card out the Data Highway Plus or Data Highway 45, I'd be good, but I can't do that uh, here. So we're not gonna set up a channel and we're gonna go right to setting up a node. So we're not gonna use that direct driver, we're gonna use OPC. 
We're going to call this PLC 520. That'll be the node name. Let's go browse our RS Lynx OPC server. Okay. And then the access path, this has to be that topic name. Okay. So let's go to DDE OPC topic configuration, PLC 5 slick 4. So let's go back to view 32 and I will put in PLC 5 here for the access path. And again, the update rate here, I'm going to put 0.1 seconds. Okay, let's accept that. I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm going to change the name to SLC 504. And this will be SLC 4. Accept that. Okay, we got our nodes done. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create some tags, right? So let me open up the tag database. Okay. And I'm not going to manually create all the tags, but I will manually create the tag folders. So let's go ahead and do that. I got the root folder selected here. So let me go ahead and create a new folder. I'll call this PLC5. And I'll create another folder called SLC4. And now I'm going to input the tags from my Iris Logix files. So let me select the uh, database browser. And let's see, it's a, the node is PLC520. The program is under, let's see, Iris Logix 5. Change the type to RSP. There it is. I want to filter by integers. And I want N750 through 99. Those are my molding tags. Okay. Everything looks good. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring those in. Excellent. Do the same thing for the 504 tag browser. This time we'll change it to my 504 node. I'll go back and find my 504 program here. Uh, which one is it? This one's the newest. Again, we'll filter on integers because my molding, this uh, program comes from my Factory Talk VOC course, and all my molding values are in the N750s. Okay. And everything looks good. Excellent. So now that the tag database has been created, we'll go into the tag monitor. This is a nifty little tool. Now, a lot of people don't know this. You can put an asterisk in there and hit enter and it'll bring up your tag browser. So let's go ahead and grab PLC5 mold one speed. Okay, 141. Let's put another one in there. This time we'll look for SLC4 mold two speed. Okay, so we're getting good data. That's great. So at this point, I'm not going to save the tag monitor. At this point, let's go to our graphic display here. We'll create a new display. Okay. And uh, let me make this a little shorter here. Okay. And what do I want to do? Well, let's put a text up here first. We'll call this PLC 520. Whoops. Okay. Next thing I'll do is numeric display. Put one right there. Browse for my tag, PLC5 tag. We'll do mold one speed. Perfect. I um, probably only need three wide. Okay, if I wanted to change the font on that, I could go to attributes, font, and make it 26. Okay. Let me uh, duplicate it three times. And let me even space all of these. We'll center them as well. And I'm going to go ahead and group them. Excellent. Okay, so let me just double click in here and do an in place edit. I'll change that to two. I'll change this one to three. Whoops. And I will change this one to four. Excellent. Okay, so now let me duplicate that group. Okay, and we'll select them both, line them to the top. Change this text to, let's see, SLC 504. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I could go in here and change each one of these, but I'm going to do a tag substitution on the group, Control R. I'm going to search for a PLC 5. I'm going to replace it with SLC 4. Place all, replace all, boom. Okay, now let's see if it works. We'll play test it. And yeah, look at 
Now look at the PLC5. Those aren't varying very much. But if I put the PLC5 in the program and back in the run, we should see them all go back to the default. So they're tracking very close to each other. I probably should add some more variability into that code. But in any case, this is how you can um, use RSV32, which goes all the way back to the 90s, right? And um, go through a control logics gateway, which didn't come out into the late 90s, right? 99, around there, 98, 99. And, uh, you know, have all your information, in fact, in RSV32, um, you know, through that bridge out to your Data Highway Plus. And it works the same way if we were to do uh, DH45, um, etc. So with that, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up and a like, please. And if you know anybody who's looking for a Factory Talk View SE or Panel View Plus training, please have them check out my website over at theautomationschool.com. That's where I teach full time and that's what keeps the lights on here. And um, I also want to thank all of our patrons who uh, support the show and get insider news and free downloads and all kinds of extras too. Um, really thank them for all the support they give us. And if you want to support the show, um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash automation, or you can pick up some of this new merch over at theautomationblog.com forward slash shop. And with that, that's the end of this episode. I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.